In this video, I'll be reviewing the Xtool D1 Pro 20 Watt for woodworking. I'll cover the assembly, software setup, make some test engravings and cuts, then design and build a box with box joints and engravings. I'll also include a few tips and tricks, so make sure you stick around for those. Starting with the unboxing, the first thing you're presented with are these envelopes which hold documentation and sample materials. I'll come back to these soon. My first impression of the components is the construction appears to be very high quality. It's nice to see most of the parts made from metal, not plastic. Here are all of the parts out of the box. A pair of X-Tool safety goggles are included. It's very important to wear these whenever using a laser cutter. This box includes tools and smaller components required for assembly. A nice range of sample materials are included to help you get started. And just having a quick look at the documentation. The quick start guide is very clear and easy to follow. It also includes step-by-step -step assembly instructions. The instruction manual mainly includes troubleshooting information. And magical things made by Xtool. This includes tips for working with different materials and plenty of project ideas for inspiration. Assembly is reasonably straightforward and it's really no more difficult than putting together a Lego set. Xtool have an easy to follow assembly video on their YouTube channel. I would recommend watching this even if you choose to follow the printed quick start guide. So this is the part of the assembly I struggled with the most. It was quite difficult to plug these connectors in due to the tight space where they are located. With a bit of perseverance I finally succeeded. This is an attachment for the air assist device which I will cover later in the video. The final step is installing the TF guard. And that's it, the assembly is now complete. I'm now setting up the X-Tool ready for the first test run. The focus lever is used to set the laser module at the correct height above the workpiece. Before powering up the Xtool, the software will need to be installed on your computer. I'm going to start with Xtool's Creative Space software which is available as a free download on their website. Once the software is installed and the Xtool is plugged into your computer over USB, you can go ahead and power up the Xtool. If it's powered up OK, the power LED should be solid white. The crosshairs on the laser module should also be visible. To connect, you just need to hit the connect device button at the top right. All going well, your X-Tool should be visible under USB devices. Note that the X-Tool does work over Wi-Fi too. For this video, I'll be focusing on USB. Select your device and there will probably be a prompt to install a firmware upgrade. Follow the instructions on screen to complete the upgrade process. The firmware upgrade button should be switched to the right before the firmware upgrade is started and return to the default position on the left once complete. If your upgrade gets stuck, press and hold the button on the left until the upgrade is complete. In my case it was stuck at 0% and only started once I held this button down. And now the fun part, time to make my first engraving. I'm going to start with the tree since that seems like a good choice for a woodworking channel. I set the processing type to engrave and power and speed to values I saw used in Xtool's assembly video. The next step is to complete the framing. This will move the laser module around the perimeter of the engraving area. Note that I'm using relative, not absolute coordinates. To start the engraving, click the start button in the bottom right. This will bring up a preview of the engraving. When you're ready to start, click the start button at the top right. It's very important to make sure you're wearing your safety goggles at this point. Also make sure your work area is well ventilated. Press the start button and the X to will start engraving. Note that this footage is sped up and the entire engraving took about 7 minutes. I also haven't set up the air assist module yet. I'll come to that later in the video. I'm really happy with how this turned out. Even without the air assist module, the edges are well defined with minimal overburn. This is the air assist module. It results in higher quality cuts by reducing the surface temperature 
and blowing away smoke or debris that may be on the workpiece. It also protects and extends the life of the laser head. The setup is very simple and basically involves connecting the air hose to the x -tool. All done. The final accessory to unbox is a honeycomb working panel set. This protects your table from the laser and helps to vent smoke away from the workpiece. I'm now set up and ready to make some test cuts. I'm going to start with a few shapes to see how that goes. To make sure I'm using the correct cut settings, I head over to the Xtool website and navigate to support then material settings. I'm using 3mm plywood. I'm making a cut. I have the D1 Pro 20 watt. And my settings are 100% power, 6mm per second, which results in one pass. So I go ahead and enter these settings into Creative Space. I start with the framing to make sure my workpiece is lined up correctly. All good, so I proceed with the cut. You can see the honeycomb doing its job by venting smoke away from under the workpiece. These cuts took about one minute to complete. And I'm really happy with the results. All edges are well defined and thanks to the air assist there is no visible overburn. To give the X tool a proper test for woodworking I decided to make a laser cut box. It will be constructed with box joints and feature wooden hinges and a wooden latch. There will also be an engraving on the lid. The first thing I need to do is work out the laser curve. This is the width of the cut made by the laser. It can differ between different materials, so I'm going to make a test cut in the 3mm ply I will use for the box. For the test cut, I'm going to cut a 20 by 20mm square. The resulting square measures 19.8 mm. To work out the curve, subtract 19.8 from 20 and divide by 2. The result is 0.1 mm. This means the laser curve is 0.1 mm in this material. For the box design, I'm going to use Fusion 360, which is a 3D modeling software. I'm very familiar with the software and know I can complete the box design relatively quickly. I'm sure you could also design this box directly in Xtool's Creative Space software or Lightburn, which is another popular software for laser cutters. The first thing I do in Fusion 360 is set up some parameters for the dimensions for my box, including the laser curve and finger length for the box joints. I'm just going to run through a quick demonstration of how to apply curve correction. Assuming the box joint finger length was specified as 10mm, they will be 9.8 mm after the laser cut due to the 0.1 mm curve. To compensate for the curve, we need to increase the finger length by double the curve width. This results in finger lengths of 10.2 mm. The curve correction should also be applied to the other side of the joint, and if we bring the joint together, we can see the curve correction visible as an overlap between each finger. To be certain I had the correct curve correction values for my box joints, I made a couple of test joints. The joint on the left, although it's a perfect fit, had no holding power. The joint on the right had just enough holding power to prevent the joint from coming apart. I therefore went with a curve correction value of 0.11mm. Now the curve correction is figured out, we can go ahead and complete the box design. I found it easier to design the box as a 3D model first, rather than a 2D sketch. At the end I will create 2D sketches from the model that can be exported for the laser cutter software. For creating the box joints, the rectangular pattern tool worked very well. The mirror and copy commands also came in useful to speed up the design process. Here I'm working on the design for the wooden hinges and latch. Once the design is complete for all of the box components, they need to be arranged ready for laser cutting. I'll be cutting the box from 300 by 300 mm plywood, so I arrange the components within a 300 by 300 mm square. 
Once the layout was complete, I selected all components and projected them into a new sketch ready to be exported. Next I repeated these steps for the second 300 by 300 mm panel. For the engraving on the lid, I imported an SVG off the Kiwi Workshop name and logo. Then resized and positioned it on the lid component. The final job in Fusion 360 is to export each sketch as a DXF file. I'm now importing the DXF files into the Lightburn software. I'm using Lightburn since I thought Creative Space didn't support DXF files. I was actually wrong about this, Creative Space does support DXF files. Anyway, it was a good opportunity to get some experience with Lightburn. Once the DXF was imported, I completed the framing to make sure the workpiece was positioned correctly. Then entered the suggested power and speed values for cutting 3mm plywood. All ready to go, so I hit the start button to begin. I was of course wearing my safety goggles and had the workshop door open for ventilation. The entire panel was cut in about 12 minutes. Moving on to the DXF for the second panel. It needed to be rotated after import just like the first one. To instruct Lightburn to engrave the text and logo on the lid, first select the entire area to be engraved, then assign a colour to the selection. You will then see a new row appear at the top right for the selected colour. Make sure the mode is set to fill. For the recommended engraved settings, I headed over to the Xtool website. For the D1 Pro 20, the vector engraved settings are 80% power and 60mm per second. This turned out to be way too aggressive, as you will see soon. Something I should have done here is reorder the layers so the engraving is completed first. This seems to be the recommended approach. I suspect just in case there is subtle movement once the cuts are made. The entire panel was cut and engraved in about 18 minutes. All done. This is the engraving with the suggested settings of 80% power and 60mm per second. And this is my second attempt with 50% power and 120mm per second. Looking at them side by side, the original settings were way too aggressive and resulted in noticeable overburn. My second attempt with less aggressive settings looks much nicer and was quicker to complete too. I guess there will be a learning process over time figuring out the optimal settings for each material. Here are all the parts ready for assembly to begin. I used super glue for the hinges and other parts that I needed to bond quickly. I started with the hinge assembly since I wanted to confirm the design worked before continuing with the rest of the box. It worked perfectly which was quite a relief. For the box joints I used normal woodworking glue, tight bond in this case. Just a small dot is needed on the inside of each finger. With a small amount of force, the box joints should push together and hold themselves in place. You could be mistaken for thinking I'm building a small castle at this point. Next time I would probably build the lid assembly separately, then finish with the hinges. And back to super glue for the latch since I want it to bond quickly. And I am done. This box was very quick and easy to assemble, and I'm very happy with how it turned out. Not bad at all for my first laser project. In summary, I'm really happy with the D1 Pro 20 Watt. It was easy to set up and the construction is very high quality. It performed well with high quality engravings and cuts. There are good software options with both Xtools Creative Space and Lightburn. The main issue I need to resolve is smoke extraction. I will probably build a dedicated X-Tool enclosure with ducting to resolve this. If you would like to purchase an X-Tool, please use the links in the video description. This will help out my channel too. 
Also, a big thank you to Xtool for sending me the D1 Pro 20 Watt. I know it will be put to good use in future projects. Finally, please like this video and consider subscribing to my channel for more content like this. See you in the next one. Thanks.